Good evening, everyone. It's Shamila Ramjawan coming to you from the Red Corner Chat. And this evening, we have a stunning lady called Noma Langa Sitoli. She is one of Africa's finest storytellers. She's a rare combination of entrepreneur, inspirational speaker, facilitator, MC, program director, propeller, voiceover artist, author and TV presenter with over 20 years of broadcasting, event management and marketing leadership experience. Also a multi-winning award winner, expert facilitator with an exceptional work ethic. And I could go on and on. Good evening. Good evening, Shamila, how are you? I'm great, thank you. We haven't seen each other in years, so you're looking My stunning as always. Husband. It's always good to see you and good evening to whoever may be watching. Thank you for joining us this evening. I am so grateful that I get the opportunity to speak to you because you are normally interviewing other people, so now I get to speak to you and I'm like, I wouldn't say interviewing because, you know, Red Corner Chat is very really casual. So we're going to have a casual yes. chat. So, we, I, you know, I've got the privilege now to have you in the hot seat. Yay! And I'm always doing the other way. I'm always having others on the hot seat. So I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely. So do you maybe want to tell everybody who is Nomalanga? <laughs> I love this question because a lot of the times when we get asked, who are you? We give all the titles that we are. I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a this. And I'm like, but who is the real you? Who is the real Nomalanga? So first and foremost, Nomalanga is a child of God, beautifully and wonderfully made in his image. Nomalanga is a storyteller. Nomalanga loves people. Nomalanga just is an embodiment of on this authenticity, an embodiment of loud laughter. I am animated. The list is endless. But I, I love people. I always say to, to anyone I get a chance to speak to, I just want to inspire people. And that's, in essence, who I am. How do we pass it on to the next generation? How do we love on people? I'm, I'm, I'm a big lover. I've got a big heart. And so this is Nomalanga in a nutshell. You know, you have that positivity and you have that sort of um, that connection that somebody can grab onto always. So mm -hmm. there is that, uh, you know, I would put it as an, a magnet. You have that magnet that somebody can just like latch onto you and hook onto you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I always have people saying, no matter what, give us your energy. And I'm like, just take it. It's here. It's an abundance. You know, I'm not hanging on to it. Take it. So talking about energy and uh, you have an abundance of energy, you know, like an energized bunny hopping around. What gets Nomalanga ticking? I like just making sure whatever I do is of excellence. So my tagline for my business, my business is the voice within, which obviously started from my gifting of public speaking. I say passion purpose and execution. I always want to make sure when I leave the room, whatever I've done, whether I've been a speaker, whether I've delivered an event and I'm in the back end and you don't see me much, but we must talk about how amazing it was. I want to give you all the energy that you can walk away with thinking, hmm, I wish I could have stayed there a little bit longer. That's the energy. That's what gets me going. I, I'm very much a... I'll use the word pedantic. I like things in order. And I always say to people, when I've delivered whatever I've done, whether I'm in front of the microphone, behind the microphone, wherever, I must be so exhausted, but that exhaustion must be because I'm so fulfilled. I could, I could talk and MC and do whatever and not eat and not drink and not do anything. But as long as I'm fulfilled and that the next person has taken it all in and they have something to go away with. That's what gets me going. I, I, I never want to do it half. It must be 110 plus, plus, plus. So we're going to change that now to passion, yeah. purpose, and pedantic. Ah, oh, you got me right there. <laughs> you got me, Shamila. Ah, oh, yeah. Hey, mm. we'll try it. We'll try and uh, do it a little bit like, but no, you know me, Shamila. I met you at an event. 
and I want it spot on. Absolutely. Always 100%. Yeah. Well done. And you're always doing the best. Um, but we'll get more into what you're doing and what you intend doing. But just, yeah. you know, starting your own business and becoming self-employed. Um, do you maybe want to just take me through that? You know, what sort of inspired you to go that route? I've been in corporate since I was 18. Um, and, I'll, and I'll do it in two parts. So my first job, I leave school uh, December. I've just turned 18 in November. I auditioned to be on a television show that um, is for youth. So it's a youth edutainment um, television show. I get that on the first audition. And then I just do corporate. You know, we go into EdCon and we do all the other lovely stuff. And then I ended up in banking because... When I grew up, we had Barclays Bank and I always thought, no, working in a bank is the most fantastic thing. Being a teller is absolutely amazing. Until I got to work in a bank. Obviously, we won't mention names. And I got in there and I was like, no, being a teller is not sexy at all. I'm happy out there in the people, retail banking, opening branches. And I think for a long time, I traveled. I got to see South Africa. I did not, eight out of the nine um, provinces. I haven't done the Northern Cape. And then somewhere along the line, there was this pull. I want to be on my own. I want to venture out the speaking. There's something about the speaking. I can't hide in corporate. And so I'd had the opportunity in corporate to actually MC events and do whatever was needed, you know, with my voice, like I always say. And um, it took five years for me to jump ship. Can I be quite honest? And every year in those five years, I'm like, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Not because I was unhappy, but my purpose needed to get going. But it took five years to do that. And so in 2015, actually 2014, December, God and I had a conversation. And funny enough, I had just been... Um, given another job. And so the following year, 2015, January, we were going to go through all the stuff that they do, HR and all of that. And something in me was like, no, nope, this is it, my darling. It's time to walk. So can you imagine executive saying, no, Malanga, you passed everything, interview everything. You are the candidate. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, but I'm leaving. I'm leaving, you know. And so January 2, I wrote my resignation later, 2015. They allowed me to do three months in terms of just, um, uh, my role was so huge. I was actually looking after five business units in terms of marketing. So it took a long time to kind of hand over whatever I was doing. And then on the 20th of March, I said, goodbye, thank you. It has been fantastic. Ten and a half years in one bank. And that's how self-employment started. Wow, that is an amazing story. So any regrets so far? Mm, no regrets, just a few things. I think when you leave and you, you think my thought was, and this I'll be very honest and candid, I would be emceeing every single day of my life and it didn't turn out that way. So the first year, 2015 into 2016, it was now doing your business templates, is doing all this stuff. I'd already registered my business in 2014. I just hadn't started operating. And so I think for me, just doing research about where you're going, your competitors, what's out there in the market. Because in my head, I was like, well, I've been doing this for this long. I'm just going to hit the ground running. And that's not exactly what happened. Regrets? Mm, no. No. Mm. I remember I had an opportunity, another executive said to me, Nomalanga, why don't you consult for us and then go out and also do your business? But in my head, I thought... I know how we work. We work from six to six. We travel. I would never start my business. And so I, I took the leap of faith. Sometimes I look back and I think maybe I could have stayed on a little bit longer just to bank a few more rands and cents. But hey, I'm here now and I've learned so much in the journey and I'm absolutely grateful. And challenges, do you maybe want to take me, you know, starting your own business, there's lots of challenges that one faces, especially being women entrepreneurs. So did you encounter any of those challenges? I think for me, like I said, if I'd done my research a little bit more and um, it, it may have been slightly better, you know, when they say you leave corporate, at least have a good 12 to 18 months cushion in terms of money. So I had 12. 12 lasted me and then that was it. So just penetrating the market, getting people to 
I guess take you seriously as you've you've alluded as a woman entrepreneur self-employed and just getting people to say okay we'll pay you the right rate so when I started I, honestly I undercharged quite a bit because I also hadn't done the research of what is the market charging so people would for example say okay we'll give you x amount for an hour or two hours and I'm like oh yeah sure that's cool and then I think a year or so later I was like hmm darling you've shot yourself in the foot because the minute you start low to now jump from this to that it's like but what's different you know so those are some of the challenges i've, I've um, encountered but it's not a lot I, I like to put it as a journey it's you learn if you don't have the challenges then when you do have the challenges at a later stage sometimes you think okay but where did i go wrong so i'm happier having the challenges earlier so that I can, you know, inspire other people so that they don't need to go through the hoops that I've gone through where they can avoid it. So, yeah. I just want to want you to take me back to purpose, you know, uh, just finding out your life purpose, because you have such an interesting journey. And, and also, how does someone find their purpose? Because we want to be out there empowering other people, empowering, you know, the youth and um, self-starters, people that want to start their own businesses and all of that. And, you know, there's so many risks involved. And um, I always say to people, you know, follow your passion and your purpose. So do you want to maybe take me through that? I think for me, Shamila, it took a very long time to get to understand my calling and my purpose. And so I go back to the day I was auditioned as a teen scene. That's the name of the program. And it was youth orientated. It never in the slightest thought process ever hit that that is where my calling is i'm passionate about young people for me it's a 13 to 19 age group the teenagers and when i look back um, on my journey i realize actually that is where it started i just didn't realize it then so when i left corporate one of the um, strategic alliances that were part of the bank they have a youth leadership program they've been running for a good 16 years plus and whilst i was in corporate i had the opportunity um, as as the bank to be a sponsor and just to go see what they do so they literally go to the beach for five days and it's young kids that have written an essay and just given why they should be chosen so it's 45 children taken from all over South Africa and also in uh, Swaziland and they come and they spend five days and it's youth leadership in, in various ways, whether it's them doing games, whether it's them foofy slide, whatever it is, just to bring them together. And I think only then did the, did the, the threads start coming together because then in 2018 and that's three years after, I wrote a booklet that says, be authentic, be bold, be you. And the reason that came about was because I find our teenagers are struggling with authenticity. They're struggling with confidence. They're struggling to just be themselves, just be you. In the advent of social media, they want to be like the next celebrity and, and whoever else is out there. And so walking the journey with these young kids, I've done it for 2017, 2018, 2019. And when I left corporate 2018 and 2019, I was a chaperone. Um, two years running with this corporate and I would sit with these young kids and they would come to me and it's like I'm their age group you know and I would see the little nuances where they are what are they struggling with and the penny dropped I am called to inspire teenagers teenagers inspire them to be authentic inspire them to never doubt themselves inspire them to tell their stories and I'll give you one example. After I wrote this book, I remember two of them, and it's different years. They're both authors. One is a Zulu author, and another one does poetry. And it was like, Sis Nomalanga, how do we self-publish? How do I get? And, 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 and I thought, oh my gosh, if I do this every day, any day, I am fulfilled. Because a lot of the teenagers are struggling, even with the voice, voice in market, voice at home. And so the two things that I'm passionate about is that development, personal development, and also career guidance. 2018, I then, not partnered, but I had an opportunity of sitting in a room of kids, lots of kids. I think they were grade 12s at Africa Tikkun. 
and a, a, a company called Brainwave takes them through a six hour process of understanding what uh, areas are out there in terms of work, in terms of you know, career guidance. So everyone wants to be a doctor, but they don't understand in terms of that area, there's so many other things that you can do in medicine. It's not just being a doctor. It's not just being a nurse, you know? And so when I, I, I coupled the two, the booklet and the career guidance, I was at peace. I was like, can I stand on top of mountains and allow kids to just be themselves? I come from an environment, my mom is a nurse, so at the age of 18, when I finished school, she wanted to ship me off to the UK to do nursing, and she said to me, my child, just go, six months, figure it out. I said, firstly, I do not like blood, secondly, I don't like needles, and I managed, Shamila, to escape that, but how many teenagers can't escape that because mom wants to live out what she wasn't through them? And for me, I'm trying to say, be authentic. There is no better place to be than being you, than being the real you, the, the way God created your universe, whatever you believe in. That is the one thing that will satisfy you. So in terms of purpose, I always say to people, what is it that's niggling at you that won't let you go? You may want to, you know, inspire the elder generation you may want to you know talk to people about drugs what is it that when you've done doing it that day everything about you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet is fulfilled and that for me is my definition of purpose so if you put me in a room of a thousand kids you will forget I am in my 40s, Shamila. I will be down there on the floor dancing I will be doing whatever because that is my purpose such awesome words, you know, and I, I, I can actually relate to that because when I'm in the schools with the kids as well, you know, we spend so much of time with them and we just give off all that love. And it's all from here because it's not something that yes. superficial, you know, it's something that we feel at that point where we want to be with them and we want to rejoice with them and spend time with them and just love them because that's what they're really lacking out there in the rural areas. So I love what you're doing, but I think your messaging is so apt when it comes to everybody out there, you know, find your purpose. Mm -hmm. Those are the key words and fulfillment. I think it's important for fulfillment because whatever you do, you need to be fulfilled because you can do more. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, so it creates a, a bigger impact as well. Mm -hmm. But just in terms of COVID, yes. now this question is too prompt, right? How did it affect your <laughs> business? <laughs> So, uh, so uh, when it comes to COVID-19, on the one hand, your business, maybe tell me how it affected mm. the business. And then on the other hand, your mental state and how you coped with that. <sighs> Where do I start, Shamila? Ah, okay, um, I'm going to start with the mental one first. I was excited, funny enough, and I kept on saying to everybody, there's an excitement inside of my being around COVID, around lockdown, and I can't put, put anything to it. Like, I can't really say, okay, I'm excited about this, right? So I work from home um, as, 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 as an entrepreneur, self-employed, and I'm used to being at home. So I thought, whoo, okay, now it's time to just kind of revisit who I am, what I do. I will tell you on the first day of lockdown, I was excited, but I was nervous. So I had a, a mixed bag of emotions, you know, like the licorice all sorts. And oh, my favorites, my favorites. Anyone yeah. listening? Those are my favorites. <laughs> Me, you too. The licorice, everything. And I remember it hit me hard, Shamila. I live on my own, but I'm used to living on my own. My, my three um, siblings left a while back. And so for me, it was like, okay, I can do this. But the fact that I couldn't drive out of the gate or walk out of the gate hit me so hard. Because, you know, for me, I like outdoors. So I can just take a walk, whether it's an hour, two hours. And that's just one way I like, who let it all out. And so whilst I was thinking I'm very strong, I remember I did have a couple of times where I just cried. I bawled my eyes out, Shams, and I'm not even going to hide it because I grew up with the teacher, our biology teacher used to say, if anything is stressing you, whatever's bugging you, just go under the shower, cold or hot, and just cry. So I've always taken that out of high school. And so I did oh, a wait, lot of can crying. I stop you there? So when you do it in yeah. the shower, you can't really see your tears, right? 
<laughs> but you can feel them. <laughs> you can't see them, but you can feel them, right? Yes, but for me, trust me, I like just it's like giving it or you know cleanser. getting rid of it that you know that heaviness yeah, it cleanses you shams you just kind of feel so much lighter you know uh, you might have a headache afterwards or whatever so for me wherever i was in the house i would kneel i would pray i would cry i would snot i would do everything and when it's all out i'm like okay let's take a bath and let's get into bed and so that's how i coped with the mental part of it i must be honest with you somehow you know god connected me with a lot of people that were in my past so people i worked with um one lady from church and we all of a sudden just started having hour long two hour long conversations and you know whether it was about my brand raksha as well we went through her sessions and so it was like people that i dealt with prior to covid and some from years ago started coming back into my life you know and so i was like hmm, this is very interesting and the people that have been close to me for some reason they went away you know so it was like a a swap and i thought okay this is a very interesting swap business wise i worked twice in 2020 i had just started working because my business you know cycles events and all of that and i just had an event with a new client and that was the indian consulate to south africa so i was like yay the year has just started so well so we had an india south africa fashion show and one of the presenters was the lady from uh, mela and so i was excited i'm like sure the year is starting off this march is starting off well and then COVID hit and that was the end none of my clients went online until lionesses decided you know what we can't wait until this thing is over. Let's just, let's just take it on. Let's take the bull by the horns. Let's have our first event online. And the 30th of April was like the first online event I did. Shamila, I had never done an online event. Yes, we do Zoom here and there and all in Skype and whatever. But here's me in my bedroom having to set up. I don't know if I had banners then. Yes, I had a lioness banner. I banners because I was there. I attended that meeting, that online meeting. Really? Yes, I did. Okay. So yes. I had a lioness banner. I think I had a lioness banner because I kept that from last year. So that was the only banner I had. But Shamila, sitting there, not knowing how the network is going to fare, not knowing how many people are going to come on, and having the script and everything ready. I mean, you can be ready as much as you can. But going online, people won't, won't believe this. But even as a speaker, for as long as I've done it for, you still have the nerves. And it's good because you've never, you never think you arrive. You know, never think you've arrived, in fact. Um, my pastor always says the butterflies fly in formation. And so I sat there thinking, no, Malanga, you cannot miss this one. And remember, we had Bruce Whitfield. So yes. that's even like, oh, my gosh, we've <laughs> got this multi-award winning speaker. I can't miss it. And it went, and I, after that, I thought, wow, sure, okay. You know, we fear so many things, but once they're done, you're like, okay, impossible is nothing. And I've always, over time, liked a, a brand, and the brand says impossible is nothing. And from that day, I was like, okay, Namalanga, you can do this. And that's how I've survived COVID with that one particular event until I think two months back, I approached another bank and I said, hey guys, I was part of your women in um, business propeller last year. Do you have anything online? And people that know me, you may have seen it on Facebook or not. People that know me know that I'm, I'm, I don't ask. I'm always helping everybody else. But when it comes to me having to ask, I'm like, uh, where do I start? And I'm a firstborn. So I'm always used to giving and doing it for my family. And so having to step out and say, okay, a bank, I'm here. I was with you last year. Do you have any online work? And they said, Hey, Nomalanga, we also kind of just, you know, baby steps, but we can't pay you, but you know what? It's a good, you know, showcase for your business. And I thought, you know what? It's a bank. Someday they will have money. And then I, you know, went in on that. So that's kind of opened one other door. Um, and so, yeah, that's how the business has been. Look, I must be honest, it hasn't been a lot of work, but it's given me time to rest, number one. 
it's given me time to reset and say, okay, I've been on this rat race. And, and, and everybody that knows me that I've talked to over COVID, I just kind of feel this was a season for a lot of people to rest from the rat race. Um, and just recalibrate and think, okay, am I on the journey that is for me? Am I in my lane or am I trying to do a whole lot of stuff? And um, I guess that's been my journey. And so out of the resting, physical resting, Shamila, I would sleep. I love my sleep. I'm not going to lie. So I would sleep when I needed to sleep. I would, when we could walk, I would walk hours and just even if i'm crying or whatever and just let it out and so that's how the emotional side has gone and that's how the business side has gone and i think the one day i said to a friend in june i promise you now if my medical aid was up to date i would have checked myself into a live hospital because you you get to a point where you're like okay what now but oh man we go through it and this too shall pass and we're here now Absolutely. This too shall pass. Well, the president's going to actually make an announcement this evening. So that's going to be very interesting as well. So in terms of business, you know, um, if he announces lockdown one, what's your yeah. intention? What do you plan on or how do you plan on marketing your business going forward? So can I be very honest with you? I'm excited about working from home. I've been loving it. So I'm still kind of thinking, uh, do I still want to go out into the people? I'm still a little bit nervous, I'll be honest, even if it's 50 people or 100 people, you know, baby steps. But for me, I think the online platform has opened up so many other avenues. Uh, today, I had an opportunity to... Uh, record something online. So we did something called Unwebinar with a, a certain uh, company just to show how we can move to the next level from normal webinars. And so I was the voice of an avatar. So all my other, you know, speaking things are finally coming into uh, being. You would see voiceover artists. So I started doing a little bit more of that. Um, and so I say to anybody, embrace online. Online has become phenomenal. Yes, we want to meet, we want to touch, we want to hug. But for as long as we can do um, online, we're touching more people and we're getting more and more creative. And so now I say, hey, yes, I'm a face-to-face -face MC, program propeller, all of that. But I do online too, you know, and that's really opened up other doors that I never would have imagined pre-COVID. So opening up other doors, MC, presenter, voiceover artist, online yeah, artist, speaker. online presenter, yeah. you know, how can one get hold of you, Nomalanga? My email address is info at thevoicewithin.co.za. If you would see, I'm also rebranding as well, Africa's finest storyteller, because I believe in the power of storytelling. Um, and that's one of the things that also during COVID I realized, but we're telling stories every single day. So if you want to catch me on Instagram, it's Africa's finest storyteller, like you, you did on the poster. And uh, yeah, those are the channels to get me on. I mean, I'm comfortable. My, my number is, is always available, but you can catch me on my website as well, thevoicewithin.co.za. Namalonga, Sitoli, the vibrant voiceover presenter, MC, and, and, and. What is your <laughs> message of inspiration, encouragement to the people out there and also fellow entrepreneurs? It may take long. It may not take long. We all have a journey that we're going through as entrepreneurs, as individuals, I just want to inspire you. Please be authentic. Please be bold. Please be you. There is no other you that is in the world. There is no other you that has your thumbprint, your fingerprint, your any print. You may be in the same industry as your competitors, but no one has your stamp, your rubber stamp. And I'm going to stand up for this one because one day I'm going to go into a clothing range and this is just be you. Love Just it. the world needs Shamila to be Shamila. The I world needs Nomalana to be. Okay, my friend will organize, we'll chat offline and we could do that. Yes. And, uh, and that's my message. Just be bold, be authentic, be bold, be you. And that's it. Love it. Parting words from Nomalanga Sitoli. 
Thank you so much for chatting to me on the Red Corner chat, and I wish you everything of the best. This too shall pass. COVID-19 is going to be the past very soon, and then we're going to get on, you know, we just adjust to the new norm, and um, yeah, it's going to be a win-win-win for everybody. All we got to do is win-win-win. Thank you so much, Shamila. Thank you to everyone that's watched the Red Corner, and it's nice to be on the other side for a change. <laughs> Loved it. Love you, girl. Take care and all the best. Blessings from me. All the Mwah. best, my darling. Mwah. We will touch base soon.